A very warm welcome to all our viewers. This is Anjali from Simply Learn and today I'll be showing you the installation procedure for the configuration management tool Puppet. So what exactly is the use of Puppet? If you consider the scenario of an organization which has a very large infrastructure, it's required that all the systems and servers in this infrastructure is continuously maintained at a desired state. This is where Puppet comes in. Puppet automates this entire procedure thus reducing the manual work. So before we move on to the demo, let me tell you what the architecture of Puppet looks like. So Puppet has two main components. You have the Puppet Master and the Puppet Client. The Puppet Master is where you write the configuration files and store them and the Puppet Client are basically those client machines which require the configuration. In case of Puppet, these configuration files that you write are called manifests. So let's move on to the demo. So here are my two machines. The first is the server system, which is basically your master where you'll write your configuration files and the other is the node or the client system. So let's have a look at both of these machines. This is my node system. The terminal is open here and the terminal has a black background with white text. And as of my server or the master machine, it has a black background with green text. So we start at our server machine. The first thing that we need to do is we need to remove the firewall. So in a lot of cases, there are chances that the firewall stops the connection between your server and your node. Now, since I'm doing a demo and I'm just showing you how a puppet works between two virtual boxes, I can safely remove the firewall without any worries. But when you're implementing puppet in an organization or a number of systems on a local network, be careful about the consequences of doing so. So our firewall is disabled. Next thing that we do is we'll change the host name of our server system. Now while using the Puppet tool, it's always advisable that you name your server's host as Puppet. This is because the Puppet tool identifies the host name Puppet by default as the host name for the master or the server system. Let's just check if the host name is changed successfully. Yep, so that's done. So as you see, still localhost is appearing as the host name. So just close your terminal and start it again. And you see here, the host name has been changed to Puppet. Okay, so the next thing that we have to do is we install our Puppet Labs. Make sure your system is connected to the net. Right, so Puppet Labs is installed. Next, we need to install the Puppet server service on our server system. Now that our Puppet server service is installed, we need to move into the system configurations for our Puppet server. So the path for that is etc sysconfig puppet server. So this is a configuration file for the puppet server. Now if you come down to this line, now this line here, this is the line which allocates memory for your puppet server. Now you must remember that puppet is a very resource extensive tool. So just in case to ensure that we do not encounter any errors because of out of memory, we will reduce these sizes. So as of now, we have 2 GB allocated by default. We'll change this to 512 MB. Now in a lot of cases, it may work without doing so. But just to be on the safer side, we make this change. Save it. And go back to your terminal. We are now ready to start our Puppet Server service. The first time you start your Puppet Server service, it may take a while. Next, we need to enable this. And if your Puppet Server service is started and enabled successfully, this is the output that you would get. In case you're still not sure, you can always check the status at any point of time. And as you see here, it's active. So everything's fine as of now. Next thing we do is we'll move on to our agent system or our client or node system. So here too, we'll have to install Puppet Labs. But before we do so, we need to make a small change in our host file. So let's open the host file. Yeah, so this is our host file. We need to add a single line here, which specifies our Puppet Master. So first we put our Puppet Master's IP address followed by the host name and then we'll add a DNS for our Puppet Server. 
So let's just go back to our server system and find out its IP address. And that's my IP address for the server system. Now the host name of our Puppet server and a DNS for it. Save this file and return to your terminal. So now we can download our Puppet Labs on the node system. It's the exact same procedure that you followed for downloading Puppet Labs on your server system too. So in my node system, the Puppet Labs is already downloaded. So the next thing is we need to install our Puppet Agent service. So Puppet is a pull type of configuration tool. What this means is that all your configuration files that you'll be writing on your server is pulled by the node system as and when it requires it. So this is the core functionality of the agent service which is installed on your client node or agent system. So my Puppet agent service is installed. So next I'll just check if my Puppet server is reachable from this node system. So 8140 is the port number that the Puppet server must be listening on and it's connected to Puppet. So that guarantees that your server is reachable from the node system. So now that everything's configured right, we can start our agent service. So guys, you would have noticed that the command for starting the agent service is a little more complex than the command for starting your server service. This is because when you start your agent service, you're not just starting a service, but you're also creating a certificate. This is the certificate that will be sent over to your master system. Now at the master system, there's something called the certificate authority. This gives the master the rights to sign a certificate if it agrees to share information with that particular node. So let's execute this command, which does both the function of sending the certificate and starting your agent service. So as you can see here, our service is started successfully. It's in a running state. Now we'll move to our master system or the server system. So first we'll have a look at the certificates that we received. The certificate should be in this location. So as you can see here, this is the certificate that we just received from our agent service. So this here within quotes is the name of our certificate. So next when we are signing the certificate, this is the name we'll provide to specify that this is the particular certificate that we want to sign. So the minute we sign a certificate, the node that sent the certificate gets a notification that the master has accepted your request. So after this, we can begin sharing our manifest files. Now here's the command for signing this certificate. Okay, so our certificate is signed, which means that the node's request is approved. And the minute the certificate is signed, the request is removed from this list. So now if we execute the same command as we did to check the list of all the certificates, we will not find the certificate anymore. Let's just check that. So as you see, now there are no more requests pending because we have accepted all the requests. If you want to have a look at all the certificates that is signed or unsigned, you can use the same command with the addition of all. And all the certificates received so far will be listed. As you can see here, the plus sign indicates that the certificate request has already been accepted. So now that our certificate is signed, the next thing we do is we'll create a sample manifest file. So this is the part that you create your manifest files in. Our file name is sample.pp and our file is created. So right now we have no content in this file. We'll just check if the agent is receiving it. And once that's confirmed, we'll add some content to the file. So let's move to our agent system. Now this is the command to execute at the agent system to pull your configuration files. So our catalog is applied in 0.02 seconds. So now that the communication between our agent system and our master system is working perfectly fine, let's add some content to the previous placeholder file that we created on our master system. So now we open the same file in an editor. Okay, so we are going to write a code 
for installing the HTTPD package on our Node system, which is basically a Apache service. Node, and then within quotes, insert the host name of your Node system. So my Node system's host name is Client. The package you wish to install, which in our case is HTTPD. And the action to be performed. And that's it. A very small and simple code. Save this file. Now let's go back to our node system and let's pull the second version of the same configuration file. So every time you execute this command as we did previously too, what happens is that the agent service, so the agent service basically checks on your master system if there's any new configuration file added or if there's any change to the previous configuration file made. If so, then the catalog is applied once again. So now our catalog is applied in 1.55 seconds. So now to check if our catalog served its purpose, let's just open our browser. Just type localhost here. And as you can see, if your HTTPD package has been successfully installed, the Apache testing page will appear here. So we come to an end of our installation and configuration of the configuration management tool Puppet. If you have any doubts regarding this, please post them in the comment section below and we'll definitely get back to you. Also hit the like button if you like this video and subscribe to our channel as we have more coming up. This is Anjali from Simply Learn signing off. See you all next time. Hi there, if you like this video, subscribe to the Simply Learn YouTube channel and click here to watch similar videos. To nerd up and get certified, click here.